doing? Great. Good. Um, I'm Amit Bendov, CEO of uh, SciSense. Happy to be here in New York. Uh, today is actually a very special day. We're signing up. We're moving our U.S. headquarters to New York. We're just going to sign a, a lease in um, for an office in Wall Street. I know there is uh, there's always excitement. There is new enterprise software coming to New York City. So so we're here. Um, just some, there, there's some slide where about the Wilby software, believe me, uh, we're actually going to see a demo pretty soon, I know. Uh, so a little bit about SciSense, we launched uh, first sales 2010, uh, this is a software as a service for big data analytics, our model is inside sales, uh, we have lots of clients, I'm going to show you some names, but we never see them, they never see us, though, you know, pretty good looking, but it's all done over the phone. We're growing at incredible speed, uh, 2011, 300%, 2012, 520%, uh, all subscription pricing, offices as of today in New York City, uh, smaller offices in San Francisco, and then R&D and some of the sales in uh, Tel Aviv, that's where I'm coming from. We just uh, recently in March, we closed $10 million uh, B round from uh, Battery, Opus, and Genesis, $20 million to date. Okay, what does the uh, uh, what does the product do? This is pretty big data analytics, which is uh, uh, has two meanings. First, it's pretty, <laughs> makes big data, makes it look good without no code, nothing. Second, uh, everybody's talking about big data. We can handle large amounts of data, not necessarily the largest in the world. So if you have petabytes or zettabytes, all these words, these may not be the right solution. But most companies don't have these kind of amounts of data. Most companies in the world between half a terabyte to a hundred terabytes of data. And this is the easiest solution to, um, to use. So it has everything that you need. You don't need to code, as we've seen. You don't need clusters, no Hadoop, nothing. And everything that you need is in the box. High performance database, tools to connect to data sources that you have in your organization, any type of data, and great looking web dashboards. It runs on premise if you want to install it and have it close to you or in the cloud. So before I talk about just see what uh, the company has been selling since 2010, almost with no buzz whatsoever, just launched publicly at uh, Strata in New York last October, and this is what some of the people are saying. Because the head of analytics of Groupon, do yourself a favor, try Sysen. There's nothing else that touches <coughs> data so easily. This is Forbes. Okay, we're creating quite a commotion in the market. This is a disruptive product. Taking disruption of big data to the next level. Wall Street Journal, Sysense creating something in a steer in the world of BI. Uh, TechCrunch, okay, all the big publications, Sysense be growing like mad. This is, we're not crazy, but we're growing. This is uh, one of my favorite from Sadie Net. The big BI boys will be in for a nasty shock in 2013. This is how dramatic the product is. So, we just started a couple of years ago. We are already approaching this quarter, probably going to reach the 500 customers. Okay, if you've sold enterprise software, you know that that's, uh, that's pretty darn fast. Okay, from big names like Merck, NASA, eBay, ESPN, Kellogg's, to a lot of uh, smaller companies that aren't as big, but definitely have big data without the big budgets, Uber, Fiverr, Fusion, and um, so these are some of the names. What's the big deal? What's the big deal about Prism? And uh, basically, our space is the business intelligence. It's not necessarily the most sexy uh, part of the world, but it's, it's a 20 billion dollar industry, and some say even bigger, okay? So most software in the market today is still stuff that was created in the early 90s. They're still making the majority of the money. And this is data warehouse and OLAP, online analytical processing technology. The product worked well. I mean, they're robust, but and they can handle large data, but they're complicated and not business user friendly. Okay, and then there's a new generation like Tableau that was just mentioned and, and ClickDeck that, that are very easy to use. I mean, they're growing pretty fast. They're very easy. You can download the product, play with it, get going really, really quick. They're a challenge. It's very difficult to handle large amounts of data and large amounts of users, okay? Prism is the next generation that is very simple, if not simpler, but can handle the uh, big data. Just for comparison, okay, if you want to use some of the legacy products to analyze large data, I just saw, um, saw a blog post from uh, one of 
let's say, what do we call the MISO, SU, Microsoft, IBM, SAP, and Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, they're taking a jab at each other and they're saying to analyze half a terabyte of data will cost you only half a million dollar for the appliance. Okay, so just, and that's just a database without the visualization, okay? At Strata in Santa Clara, a couple of months ago, we demonstrated 10 terabytes in 10 seconds on a $10,000 Dell server, commodity server, no special appliances, uh, and we won. We're voting the number one in the show by the audience, so kind of like the American Idol of BI. <laughs> Okay, so how, I mean, it sounds too good to be true. That's what everybody's saying. How could it be like, you know, something is so low cost across such amount of data? This is the ingenuity. This is our elastic of technology. This is what we've been developing. And if you look at the computer, there are three types of resources, okay? There is a disk, okay, where you can store a lot of data. This is what the, a lot of the older technology is working. It's cheap, infinite amount of data, but it is relatively slow, okay? Then there is the, all the rage today is in memory. You load the data to the computer's RAM, okay, you can store and you can process queries really, really quick, okay. The problem is that RAM is small, okay. So you could do tens of gigabytes, hundreds of gigabytes, but it's not terabyte scale. We use the <laughs> disk, we use the RAM, and we take it to the next level, we use the chip, okay. In today's modern chipsets, there's a substantial amount of memory, okay? There's cache memory, it could get as much as uh, 20 megabytes. So we actually, and it's 100 times faster, moving data from the cache to the CPU is 100 times faster than moving between the RAM and the CPU. So we use all the resources available on your computer. We, every nook and cranny that is available from the CPU, the RAM, and the disk, and I'm gonna explain to you how it works. Okay, this is the last slide. After this, I promise you, we're gonna see some product. Okay, so we use all of this memory hierarchy, okay, from slower to faster to the fastest. Okay. And there are a number of things that we're doing. First, it's a columnar database, okay? Rather than storing tables, <coughs> we store columns, okay? So if you think, let's say each panel here is a table and you have lots of tables, we slice them. Like so, if you have a customer table with name, address, zip code, uh, size of the accounts, all of these, each one is a table. Why is that important? Okay, because then we can load in analytics, you only need a few columns usually, sales by customer and product. You need three columns out of 50 or something. If you're joining a dozen tables, that could be 500 columns, okay? You only need three, okay? So this is, in and of itself, this is 50 to 100 times faster than a relational database. Doesn't matter, you don't need to get the schema exactly right, star scheme and all these things, just like. So that's number one. Number two, after we slice it, we compress it. So the data actually is smaller type compression and string compression, so it actually can fit into the memory. Okay, so the data is stored on the disk all the time, but we can load just the compressed columns that we need. That's step number two. Step number three is fit it into the CPU cache. So then we slice, we dice, okay? We already sliced, now we're dicing, okay? So all, every column is being diced, let's say, into four mm -hmm. megabyte chunks that are stored compressed inside the CPU, and that's where all the calculation is being done. So if you wanna, and the beauty of it that the modern chipset have vectorized calculation. You can, you can calculate, let's say, add 16 numbers, okay? 16 addition operation in one machine line, okay? And, and that's what we're doing. So if you wanna do sum of sales and have about a billion rows in a database, this could run 16 times faster, okay? That's how it works. It works with um, any server, so if you have four megabytes or 20 megabytes, doesn't matter, automatically recognize what you have in the hardware and we'll make the most out of it. You can use any computer. Probably what you have, I'm gonna show you how I'm processing a, 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 an HR database, okay? If 300 employees, 10 years worth of payroll on this laptop, okay? All right, so demo time. Okay, 
first I'm going to show you the end product. Okay, this is this is a, a demo dashboard, interactive dashboard that we did together with TechCrunch. Okay, it's processing a pretty complicated database, about 70 tables. Okay, seven zero connected and a pretty complex. It's analyzing data of investment transactions. Okay, so are familiar with the Crunchbase database? Okay. It's an online database that every investment every, ever made in software companies. And if you try to look at the data, it's pretty complicated. It's almost impossible to understand. Here you see everything. So we're seeing uh, what is the average investment in round B in the software industry, okay, by location. I can say, let's say if I want to see it, not in the software, I will see it in software and advertising. Okay, it all changes. So you can see what that transaction, I'm sorry it's a little bit truncated here, but you can see this is live data that you're seeing. This is very, very fast. And you can see are more investment being made in New York or in Silicon Valley. Who is investing? Why are they doing it? How does it change on timeline? Okay, this is what a dashboard looks like. Very, very simple. Everybody can use that, okay? <coughs> That's easy. Now I'm gonna show you how you create a dashboard. Okay, so we're done with this part. We're done with this part, and we're done with this part, okay? So this is the ElastiCube Manager. Remember the ElastiCube, that magical technology that crunches a lot of data on very simple computers, but there's no code, okay? This is really a business user level. Two-thirds of our buyers are really not from IT. They're business people, okay? <coughs> Marketing, operations, finance, CEO, CFOs. And I'm gonna create a new database, okay? New elastic loop, let's call it <coughs> and we're done, okay? Basic I created the database, it doesn't do anything right now. Nothing exciting. But it's a fully functional, high performance analytical database, like a vertical or green plum in one button click. Okay, next step, now we're gonna start pulling some data. How do you add data? Just click at data. And here we have a long list of pretty much all the data sources in the world, all the SQL databases, custom SQL, obviously Excel spreadsheets, Salesforce, Amazon, Redshift, Heroku, you can pull the data. If it moves, we can read it. And uh, let's pick one data source. I'm gonna take my SQL database, this local here, all I need for my IT people is just a user ID and password. The rest I can figure it out myself. Okay, this is something you can go to the website, install, play with the product. Don't take my word, you can play with it and use it yourself. I'm gonna connect to the server. It shows me what databases are available. I'm gonna take the employees database, click OK. And there you have it. Now you have a list of all the data that's there. Okay, no code, just a few clicks. I'm gonna take all of them and click add, and we're done, okay? So Prism automatically identify what data is available in this database, identify the relationship between <coughs> the tables, okay, it's usually the sticky points, creating these, uh, if all of you have, if you ever try to create like a star schema, very, very simple, okay? And I can play with it, it's pretty sophisticated in what you can do, but you don't need to do any of that. And now I'm gonna click build, and it start, then start pulling the data. This is something that can work like every hour, every day, every week, depending on the frequency of the data. You don't need to do that. That's done automatically. And now it's pulling the data from the SQL database, converting it to the Columnar database, compressing it, and, uh, and pulling data. See how quickly it's working already, like hundreds of thousands of rows. It's gonna process several millions of rows here in a matter of a few seconds. Okay, that's all it takes. And then we're ready to show some pretty pictures. It worked a little slower, I could have told a few jokes, but it's working, <laughs> working pretty fast. Yeah, we'll be done. It takes less, I, I would call it like, from data to dashboards in five minutes, so we're good. How much data? How much data in this database? In ten, uh, several millions. It's not, not a huge database bar standard. Usually, you know, we shine with its billions, but this is like 
a small laptop, and I really, I don't think you want to see me standing here for 30 minutes. <laughs> Can I ask you a question while it's running? Please. You're getting the joints from the integrity constraints on the database, is that right? Yes, yes. But if you don't like them, drag and drop and you can change them. Okay, and for some reason, you'll recognize about 95% of the cases, not all of them, but... Uh, so if you point it to an SAP instance, how, how is it going to do that? Good question. First, yeah, it can recognize that, and we have some templates for, for SAP. If you want to do finance or HR or uh, warehouse, you know, we've been around, and we have a little easier interface for SAP that you can search by text, so create sales order, all these things. All right, we're done. Uh, one minute, all the database is ready to rock. Dashboard. Now we're going to launch the BI Studio. This is how you create. Very simple tool. Again, no coding. <coughs> If you're familiar with PowerPoint and Excel, you're good. Okay, so all the data is here. Let's do uh, something simple. Okay, we're going to start with something very simple. I'm going to create a KPI. Let's say, let's look at the headcount in the company. Okay, so just I create one of these. I'm going to pull, let's look at the employees table. Take one field, drop it here. It's asking me if I want to do a count. See how quickly that worked, 300,000 employees? Split second, okay? Distinct count is one of the things that, one of the queries that brings a database to its knees when you do that. Very difficult queries, works in no time. Okay, obviously, we mentioned Excel. You could, if you want to rename. All right, you like it bold. Can have it bold, okay? All right, let's create another one. Let's do the total payroll. Yes, please. In the static database, well, are you just pre-processing over for normal queries? Like it's not pre-sorted. It's not the queries are not calculated. It's all done on the fly. Okay. What kind of hash function we use for compression? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, uh, uh, not sure. I don't know. Just, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm CTO. Sure, no. So let's create a, a pie chart. Okay. Let's look at the um, headcount by department again. If you ever done a pivot table with Excel, you're good to go. That's. Uh, let's look at the payroll. Salary. I'm gonna throw it in. Um, all right, that's that's very simple. Now, if we want to make it interactive, all you do you just take the from date, and you can start playing with the data. Let's add another KPI. Let's look at the total payroll. Same idea. Just take the data, drag and drop. Some. All right, now this doesn't look pretty uh, because it's large number. So let's see it in millions, OK? So just like Excel, take the formula bar, divide by million. How hard was that, OK? So now you can see per year. What's the data? And we're not done. One button click. And now you have your web version of the uh, same dashboard. There you go, a few seconds, and now you have interactive web application. So you got from big data to Simple dashboards, okay? If you want, you could jazz them up with some uh, styling, but same idea. The beauty of it, this is pure HTML5 canvas, so you actually empower the end users to tweak the data. Uh, you could, let's say that I'm, uh, I don't like the way it looks, so I can go and uh, I want a different type of chart. Let's say I want to make it a ring chart, that's it, okay? So that happens on the fly. Very, very quickly, it has pretty sophisticated capability, if not that you need to, but if you want, you can get, get modify the JavaScript on the client side, you can modify SQL on the, on the website, but um, 
that's the gist. You can get pretty sophisticated. Um, just so you understand the challenge. How well does this work with <clears throat> large amounts of real-time data? Is it difficult to get that synced into the, you know, the internal format, um, or is it more for like batching data in? It's it's pretty real time. So most companies will run it every few minutes if you want real time. And and it the uh, the updates are incremental, so it doesn't okay. build it from scratch. It just corrects the deltas. Okay. Please in the back. Is your product? I maybe mean, I missed this, but is it a software as a service or it's sold as a license? It's both. First, it's software that you can install on premise or run in the cloud. Okay, the subscription, pro it's always subscription pricing. So, it's a SaaS business model. How you use it technically is your call. Please. Uh, can you handle web based data like JSON or any types like that? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, uh, the, the crunch base is JSON actually that I just showed you. And, and compared to Dumbo, so the main advantage seems to be the speed right, of processing. No, Tableau is a visualization. Tableau is the front end. It's a very nice tool. This is the full BI stack. It has a database. If you want to uh, crunch a billion records on Tableau, you need to put a Teradata or a Power Excel or something. That's everything is included here. Second, it is for big data, and it's a 64-bit application. Tableau is 32-bit. So. So, yes. that, so that being said, on the back end, are you scared of Redshift, or do you think that's not really? Uh, we're not. We're not well? scared. No, this is a uh, uh, Redshift is still the same uh, uh, technology. Sending large amounts of data to the web isn't easy. Uh, if you ever try, just try to ship like a teradata, teradata of uh, terabyte of data over the web. It's expensive and it takes forever. So. Most companies don't run it. Uh, if you're big data, most companies don't. Unless all your data is already in the cloud, you don't run it over there anyway. It's not there. Once you're published to the web, how malleable is the data? I mean, can I compare and correlate by dragging one widget to another, and 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 will it yeah. will it sort that? Yeah. All right. Very Thank good. you all very much. Uh, we are hiring. Bob Spina here. Raise your hand. These are VPO sales. We are hiring. We need like 15 people in New York by the end of the year. All right. Thank you all very much.